Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of risk assessment guys. Okay, so in our last lecture, we discussed about risk identification, right? So in that only, I discussed the diagram for risk assessment, right? So whenever a question is given, please draw the full diagram guys. Because risk management or risk identification cannot be done with without identifying the assets also, right? Yes. So basically it is a step by step process. So it is better to draw the full diagram even though it is asking about risk identification or risk management because if it is asked for risk identification, you are just showing the future steps. If it is a risk assessment, you are where you are getting the data. You are getting data from here, right? Yes. So that is the reason why it is better to draw both the diagrams. Okay. So in a risk assessment phase, you will be assigning some values and all those things. Then you'll be calculating the likelihood. You'll be calculating the risk factor. Then you'll be reviewing it and then you'll be documenting it. So these are the steps which we'll be discussing in this lecture, guys. Okay. Okay. So basically risk assessment. So what is risk assessment, guys? So you are assessing something. So you are checking some values or you are doing something, right? Yes. So risk assessment is a process of calculating or determining the relative threat of a risk of vulnerability. So basically how much a chance is there for an occurrence of an risk? So that is the main goal of your thing, guys, here. Okay. Yes. So risk assessment is implemented to know the relative risk. Yeah, that's what I was exactly saying, guys. Okay. So here we will be having some formulas. Okay. We are having basically only one formula, guys. Okay. Yes. So risk is equals to likelihood into value minus a current or a risk percentage. Okay. Plus uncertainty. So uncertainty is nothing but the not clear data. So basically we may not have all the clear data all the time, right? So some situations we might be having some faulty data or risk data. So that is nothing but your uncertainty. Okay. Likelihood is nothing but change of vulnerability occurrences. Okay. So value is nothing but your score, current or risk percentage. Okay. Yes. Okay. So these are some examples guys. Guys, basically in one of our question papers, a problem was given on this guy. So that is the reason why I have written three problems on this guy. Okay. Yes. So let us go. So assert A, vulnerability score is given as 60. Okay. So number of vulnerabilities they gave one. Okay. So likelihood value they gave one. Okay. So with no controls they gave. Okay. So this percentage is nothing but your control value. And they gave data are represented accurately 90%. But we want the value of inaccuracy. So it is nothing but 100 minus 90. That is nothing but 10% is inaccurate. Right. Yes. So now substitute in risk formula. So risk is equal to likelihood. What is likelihood guys? One. So one into. So what is the value? It is value is nothing but score. Score is 60. So you wrote 60. Okay. So minus. After that we are having no controls. But hence zero controls. Okay. Zero percentage. Plus what is uncertainty? That is 10 percent. Okay. So we wrote. Okay. So here we wrote 60 plus 10 percent. Right. So here the answer is 60 plus 10 percent. Okay. But the thing that you should remember is. Okay, here you are trying to add some percentage with the 60, right? So indirectly this part, you can make it into normal by multiplying it inside. So 60, 10% of a 60, you need to add. That's it. That is nothing but 60 plus a 6. That is a 66, right? Okay. So if you are confusing in between it, so write a 10% and multiply this part inside guys. That's it. Simple. If you are confusing or else normally you can understand it basically if you are not confused. Okay. Yes. So in the same way, we, I solved two more problems guys. So this is the same problem. Here also they gave score. Here also they give the vulnerability number. Here they give the likelihood. Here they give 50% chance of occurrence, the control. Then they gave 80% accuracy. So based on those values we have written and again the percentage calculation. Okay. So here we are having 60 and here we are having 50 and 20 percentage. So 50% of 60 and 20% of 60. You'll be calculating it. You'll be getting the result. That's it. Okay. Similarly, you will be doing the same process for the next example also. Okay. So I hope everyone got some basic idea. Okay. So based on the values, we direct, we divide them into five different categories, guys. One is a very high, high, medium, low, very low. So high are nothing but high in risk, low in risk, very low in risk. So based on these properties, you will be defining them. Okay. So whenever any process is completed, we need a documentation, guys. So the major reason of documentation is that, so assume that you worked on a project for 10 years, guys. Okay. Okay. So now you know everything in the project, right? So if someone says to change something, you'll be changing within seconds. You'll be, you know, where the code is written, where everything is written, right? So basically you can take some example of some big, big companies. So they will be doing these kind of things like long, long projects. Okay. Yes. So unfortunately you resigned for the job for, you got some other company job. So you resigned here and you went somewhere else, but someone need to continue this project, right? Yes. 
so that is the reason why you need to write documentation because some new user will be coming now some new programmer will be coming he should understand the code how you wrote the variables how you defined the why you wrote why you defined like that why you gave different different files why you used this file structure why you used that folder structure these things everything should be understood by him so that is the reason why you will be writing documentation so in the same way here everything at every step completion we will be documenting it guys because we want to store this data for your further references okay as every everything now done we document all the steps followed by results what we got okay so based on this we'll be doing this and at then you'll be finalizing it guys okay so once you identified the risk once you assess the risk so now you know which risk to you, you to for you to control so now you will be applying your risk control strategies guys okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea about this risk assessment concept so in the next lecture we'll be discussing about the risk control strategies okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching